Uh, we've met many years ago. About 30 years. Really? And I've gotten to know William Forsyth, who's a wonderful actor, a great storyteller, and a good companion when we go out. <laughs> and that was the genesis <laughs> of, of this Q&A session. Throw whatever you want at the guys. I'm pretty sure they're well equipped to handle anything. <laughs> Have we got our first question already? Oh, wow. Oh. Hello? Oh. Hi, my question is for Costas. Um, if you could pick any character from any horror franchise to put into any soul trap, what one would you pick and what trap would you put them in? Well, just because I've been dying to work with William Forsyth, <laughs> I'd like to get his character from one of the great films that he's done, and uh, that would be The Devil's Rejects, and I'd like to get him in a trap and try and kill him, but he's unkillable. <laughs> the unkillable William Dying Forsyth. is not an option. <laughs> We've got another question already. Hello. My question's for Costas. Um, if you could be put in any saw trap, um, what trap would you think would be the easiest to survive and then the hardest to survive? What the hell kind of question is that? <laughs> you never know until you get there, babe. I'm just That's... thinking every question's going to be, hi, Costas, if I could put you in a trap. What, what, what's wrong with me? What have I done to you? Costas would be driving home listening to Five Young Cannibals. We're caught in a trap. Radio off. Good old can know. walk out. <laughs> Elvis, I miss you. <laughs> and we've got another question. Hello. Hi. Um, so I'm a big fan of both of you, but my question's for William. Um, I'm a big Rob Zombie fan, so I just wondered if you had, like, what was it like working with Rob on a few movies, and if you had any funny stories? Another what's it like to work with Rob I'm Zombie? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. He's a wonderful director. He's a great guy. Unlike his image to me, he seems more like a college professor. He's an awesome cat, and, and let me put it this way. When we work, he put a lot of trust in me, and I tried to run with the ball as far as I could. But a, a brilliant experience. Doesn't get better than that. Devil's Reject is a gnarly film. It's like a nasty movie. Like, obviously, it was the sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses. Everybody seen that. I don't think I expected what I got from Devil's Rejects. Was it a tough shoot? Because obviously you're out in the desert. It was the absolutely shittiest, dirtiest, filthiest locations you could ever imagine. But the best, best, best fun. Um, I got to join the family of these crazy maniacs. By the way, free bird my ass. <laughs> you know, it's like the brilliant experience. Um, but absolutely filthy. I mean, we talked about it all the time. You, your sweat had sweat. It was absolutely despicable. But the, the time we got to spend together was absolutely fantastic. There's great, great people. I love all the people. I love, God bless you, Sid, up in heaven. You know, they're the best, the best. I mean, I would sit at dinner and have conversations with Sid and we would talk about all the classic movies from the beginning of time, which apparently he was in every one of them. So, it was awesome. Is the character, sorry, the cast in a Rob Zombie film, he always picks like people that he likes or people that he knows and people with a storied film history. So being on those sets must have been crazy to just have those conversations. He puts a lot of trust in the people that he hires. And, and believe me, if, if you didn't show up prepared, you, you would, it would be a living hell for you. But if you're there, and you're there to deliver, uh, he puts a lot of trust in you. Uh, he, I mean, he encouraged me, which is fantastic for me, because I can't stop myself. And my, I, my world is, if it's not Shakespeare, it's not verbatim, period. And he put a lot of trust, and we were able to produce like some really incredible moments, so. We've got a question in the middle. These are so serious, these questions. I know. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, Costas, last time we saw your character in the Saw franchise, he was locked in the bathroom. Do you possibly think you ever escaped from that bathroom? I have a brilliant plan to get out of the bathroom, but I can't tell you about it because I'll never work again for that franchise. But there is a possibility that's plausible. And for the fans that know about Saw, uh, there was a key that went down a drain in a bathtub. Did anybody remember that? I'll leave it at that. Okay. Mm -mm. Right. Yes. Um, hello. Uh, I've got a question for um, Costas. Um, hey, dude. <laughs> um, it, uh, okay, I've got it. Um, if you could be any Saw character for a day, 
Who would you be and why? Me, because I'm me and I can't be a girl and I want to stay a little bit younger than Tobin Bell and they're the only other two people I'd want to be. So I'll stick to me. I think that's a wise choice. Has everybody seen Saw X? In fact, more accurately, is there anyone here who hasn't seen Saw X? I don't want to... No, no. Leave immediately. Next question. Hello. Hi. Um, you were in Once Upon a Time in America, William, with um, Burt Young, who died very recently. Um, you were also with Joe Pesci in a particular scene with him. What do you remember about that scene in the bar? Was anything that really stood out to you in that scene? Definitely. Bert, Bert was, first of all, God bless him, Bert was one of the sweetest guys in the world, but you know, Bert, Bert's a rough customer. He was great. I was doing a thing in that scene where I had a match in my mouth, and I was purposely, I'm flipping the match over and over during the scene, and at one point, Bert looked at me, and I'm telling you, I mean, I about took a shit. He looked at me so intensely, and he used it in the scene. And the next thing you know, the scene went to a whole nother level. And he was a great actor and, you know, I mean, I, I, it's very rare that I feel really sad when somebody's gone. Bert, Bert gave me a lot of advice as a young actor. He really did. He went out of his way to tell me, always do better, always do your best. And, you know, th there's no better advice than what we do at all. Legend. All the way at the back. Hello. A uh, question for Bill. Uh, Bill, big fan of your work. Boat drinks, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cohen Brothers. Raised in Arizona, one of my favorite films. Anyone who's ever been in a Cohen Brothers film, I have to ask, what was it like? I'm not sure they liked me in the end because I didn't end up doing another movie with them. <laughs> I was going to ask why that, but, why that never happened as well. But that does happen. I think that Raising Arizona ended up being one of the great, great Coen Brother films. My personal experience, it was incredible. I'm kind of a, kind of a methody, let's call me, kind of actor. So I take things very seriously, but I love comedy. The time on that set, I would watch those guys. I mean, I love watching people. Joel would just stand there looking all thinking. And he would just get circled. You know, Ethan would circle him. And then suddenly, all at once, they would both turn around and say the exact same things. I mean, it was, I, I could see them on their couch with, you know, with their little TV trays, eating and, and watching TV. I could, see the, I could see the kid in them when I worked with them. And, you know, I mean, I'm glad you're asking me about movies that I love. I mean, I, I hadn't seen that movie in years. And what I, about John, uh, John Goodman? Oh, space? God. <laughs> we would try to, like, totally screw with each other constantly, always trying to make each other laugh. Bill, we even I'm tried, so sorry. Come, come, we even I, tried to outsnore each other, you know? Can, we'd be like, you know. Can we get you to lift the microphone up just a tiny touch? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. You know, back in my singing days, this was a no-no. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> that's well better, isn't it? You want to hear those dulcet tones? Uh, we've got another... Manchester, group. England, England, across the Atlantic Sea. Cheers, buddy. Right? <laughs> yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. We've got a question over there. Hi. Evening, gents. I hope you're well. Um, William, I have been a fan of yours for, for quite a while now. Um, since I first saw you in Out for Justice in 1991. I alluded to this yesterday. Um, for those who are Out of Justice fans, I need to ask the audience first. Does anybody know why Richard did Bobby Lupo? No, come on. Come on. Not got, they've not got it. I do apologise. Um, I probably shouldn't curse because there are children around, but, you know, <laughs> Bobby Lupo. Bobby Lupo. I'm glad, he's, I'm glad he's gone, and I'm glad Richie's gone, too. I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, in, in terms of my question, um, it goes for both of you guys. You come across as nice, cool, calm fellas. However, when you get in front of that camera, you can turn into nasty mothers. 
I won't go any further. So what's your process behind that? How do you switch it on and off from one to the other? Um, look, we all have our little secrets and we find a way to be as nasty as we can be. And you've got to love the guy you're playing. And there's so many different answers that you can be given. But in the end, when you've got quality in front of you or it's not so good, you try and make it better. And that's what I try to do. Just do your best. All you can do is be honest. All you can do is you do your homework, you do your research, you try to come up with the things that are very important, the hook in the films. And once you find those things, you have to let it go, and then you let that process begin. Is, isn't this too loud? People have been yelling in my ear all week, but it's, it, it, you find the character. And once you find that character, that can take weeks and weeks. But once you do, you let it fly. And whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, we're not allowed to judge. You know, as, as actors, we have to love the character, as, as my friend here said, and, and, and we have to be committed to that character. I've played a few characters that I absolutely despise, particularly real people like John Wayne Gacy. Fuck him. You know, I hate it. I hate him. But at the same time, when you play a character like that, you have to find all of the things that are in there and you have to bring it to life. And you know, that's our job. Afterwards, we can hate them completely. So. Say no more. What I think I like about you guys the most is you're both very open, warm people and you're very very easy to get along with. Like, I, I've met Costas many years ago at here, where the great time, you instantly remembered me, which not, doesn't always happen. You asked me how I was. I'd never met you before at all, Bill. You, we were like, you, come here, give me a big handshake, like right away. And I feel like those types of people who are open and honest with their emotions and those people who are warm are also the people who can flip their emotions and they, can, like, like make, the, they make the best actors. They're in touch with their emotion memory, things like that. And I think that's why you guys are so good at what you do. I'll take that as a compliment. We've got a question down the front. Oh, hello. Um, is, is there a Caitlin Perry anywhere? <laughs> if there is, please come to the front of the stage or go to the office. We've got a question on the front with Jade. Um, my question's for Costas. Uh, it's not strictly horror related, but you've become something of a horror icon. I wanted to know what it was like working with a fellow horror icon with Tom Skerritt on Picket Fences to see if you got any kind of advice from him. Tom Skerritt. Um, Tom Skerritt uh, was a lovely, warm guy. He told me how he began his career. He was with a bunch of guys that uh, were just looking to get a job, and it was Donald Sutherland and uh, Elliot Gould, and they made this thing called MASH, and everybody wanted to just get paid, and they end up becoming iconic actors after that because it was a hit. And then when we were talking about life, I mean, we, even with William, we talk about acting sometimes, and I'm sure if I asked him a smart question, he'd give me an answer, but we talk about life, and when you have life, you can bring it to your work, and that's what you do, you share life stories with people because there's depth and people are interested in people and you end up playing people. So that's the major stuff with Tom Skerritt and William. We talk about life in general and you know, you learn a few things along the way and then there's acting technique and all that kind of stuff. But uh, working with legendary people, becoming friends with legendary actors that give a damn about the work makes you care a little bit more and uh, hopefully it lends to longevity. And here we are on stage talking to you. Got one, another one in the front row. Hello. Uh, it's for William. Um, your dialogue in The Devil's Rejects is amazing. I was just wondering how much of that was you and how much of that was written. And do you have a favorite line from the film? <laughs> well... There's a lot of great lines that are written in The Devil's Rejects, many great ones. But like I said, Rob gave me a lot of freedom to create, and, and I took it. And there's a lot of, lot of lines in that movie that are, you know, came out of the moment. Came, like, for, like, 
I told the story probably already, but we were doing the scene with the film critic, which is my personal favorite scene. And suddenly, you know, that guy is knocking Elvis. It was not in the script. He, him knocking Elvis was. But I told, I, I told Rob, I, I said, please, I go, I can't let this guy knock Elvis. He goes, do whatever you want. So if you ever get a chance to look at that scene, it's, it's amazing because that actor had no idea what I was gonna do. When I asked, I go, what did you say about the king? He's like, and then when I grab him, look at his face again. He's like, whoa, and he gets thrown on the table. And when, the best kind of acting you can do is freedom. When people encourage you to be free, the best work comes out of you. That's one of the great things about Rob and some other great directors that I worked with is to give you the freedom to open up and let what you have. Because by the time a movie begins, if you're doing a good job as an actor, you know this character better than anyone, including the director or anybody else. And a great director knows that and he lets you do it. We did it like crazy there. I mean, the lines, I mean, look, even Ronnie White, oh my God. I mean, I think 80% of what I said came out of the moment. Rob's like, more, more, mess with Sherry, say something dirty, more horrible, and you know. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> We've got another one just down here. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, thanks for coming here. Um, uh, William, I just wanted to ask, I, Extreme Prejudice is a film I feel that you were fantastic in, and it's underrated. Uh, if you have any stories or ideas about when you were in it, and also being on set of The Rock, did you have much interaction with Sean Connery, and do you have any stories about your time together? I was a real James Bond guy and Sean Connery was my James Bond. And to have the privilege to show up on the set to be able to mix it up with Sean Connery was one of the, you know, a dream come true for me. And, and therefore, once again, I took some chances and there, were, there was a couple moments when, like, when I went behind Sean Connery in the scene we did and I give him a little I give him a little tap on the back of the head because that could have ended in my death in about a second. You know, you ever touch me again, I'll come over there and I'll kick your foot. It could have been anything. Instead, he did the most brilliant thing, what a great actor does. He went with it and you see in his eyes, you see this fire in his eyes like he'd want to tear my head off. But instead, it made the scene better. And that's what great acting's about. That's what people do. Is it, it's not acting. The worst actors are always acting. The better actors are reacting. They're playing the moment. And, and my moment with Sean is one of the moments of my life. Now you asked me about Extreme Prejudice. I love that film. I love Walter Hill. He was a, he's a great, great director and a very stylized director. That film was a tribute to Sam Peckinpah. It's a, it's a last of its kind kind of movies. You'll never see movies like that again. And the entire time we made that film, we could feel it. It had this tremendous cast. Everybody worked really hard. And another sweaty, nasty location. I mean, we were in El Paso. It was like 110 degrees every day. And I can't tell you the, the amount of fun that we had. I'm glad you guys are asking me about movies I like. You know, because there's plenty I hated, but I won't tell you there, <laughs> unless you ask. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one over here. I have a question for Costas. I just want to say first, I absolutely love you in the Soul films. I think you're an incredible actor. And I wanted to ask, how does it feel to be the only person in that series to successfully survive the reverse bear trap <laughs> and kill someone with it. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. I, um, I feel very privileged and uh, I guess with Saul, you know, the rumor was if you misbehave as a person, you'll be dead and gone. I behaved, I gave him what I could and uh, I got revenge on her with the bear trap and they let me out of the trap. Look, I think if you do your best work, people, and you, you don't clash with people, you usually you know, stay around. So I can just say something. When I first got the, the first Saw movie, when I was introduced, it was such a hit that I said, I just don't want to get in its way. So I just went with the flow and did my job and I'm the only living survivor up until this day. And by the way, who saw uh, Saw X? Did, did anybody scream when I came on the screen at the end? Yeah! 
You know what? No more questions for me. Talk to William. I'm going to sit here and gloat. <laughs> well, we've only, got, we've only got time for one more question. But before we do, I think it, it, it's a tribute to the fearless, fearlessness of your acting ability to step into that franchise and absolutely smash it to the point where I think everybody wants Costas to become the main... We want, like, the new Jigsaw. That's what we want. Yeah? Nobody's better than this guy. Oh, my God. I love this room. <laughs> this is our last question of the weekend. No pressure, sir. Okay. Um, I'm Italian. Sorry for my English. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, one question for Costanz. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm here only for you. I discovered this event only two days ago, and uh, so I'm here only because of you. Uh, the question is... Um, uh, Do, will you come to Italy? Say again. Will you go to Italy? Will you come to Italy? I come One to Italy. I see, see. I, uh, listen, I'm Greek. I live next door. Una faccia, una razza. You know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm happy you came. I'm very privileged that people, have, all of us are privileged that you come to see us. But from Italy, it's even more of a compliment. Why, do you have a nice, uh, you, are you a good cook? <laughs> no. No, but, but we found a good restaurant somewhere, correct? Not yet. Not I yet. Will. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, tell me something. Um, I love Italy. I want to say uh, I was the only person uh, who screamed uh, during the last uh, scene of uh, So X. Really? I really, literally. I really, literally screamed. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love, I love your you. Character. I don't. Ti amo, ti amo. I don't want to Ti amo anch'io. Ti amiamo. Ti amo, yes. I, I don't think it. we could end this panel in a better way. We just said we love each other in Italian. <laughs> Costas has found love with Italians. We're ready to go to Cinecittà anytime yes, and start yes. a movie together. <laughs> I'll just have you know. Matore. Yeah. Guys, I'm so happy that we could get Costas in a panel. And Bill, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us weekend. You guys have brought me nothing but joy. Honestly, seeing you interact last night, I was just like, these dudes. God bless you guys. You're the best. Thank man. you Thank so you. much. Give it up for Costas and Bill.